All right. So be uh oh for those of you that don't know me, I am Denisha Wright, co-owner of Images of Ink and co-creator of Epic Facebook group, Incredible Pressed Images Crafting. Tonight we are going to design a couple of graduation stoles, one for a kindergartner and one for a high schooler. So let's get into it. So because you guys picked the slant design and I already have a slant design created for this school, this is going to make it a lot easier because I am going to actually pull up a design that I already have created. And all I have to do is basically swap out his information for the new information. For the second one, we're going to do the dots for the kindergartner. Uh, we'll build that one from scratch, even though I have a dots one already created. Um, I'll build it just so you can see it from the beginning to the very end. And how about that? So that way we have about an hour before my son gets out of practice. So in my slant, I have my left and right sides and it has all of my elements that I have used for this design. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my background, which I have a gradient on. I'm going to go to the fill and I'm just going to reverse it because because they're at the same school and, um, you know, both pretty much the same basketball, football, track, pretty much the same sports. I just want to switch it up a little so it doesn't look identical. So I'm going to go in here, grab my background on both sides, and I'm just going to reverse my slant, or excuse me, my gradient. Now on my slants, I have the purple stripe with the gold outline i'm going to flip those as well so that way they are in reverse so let's go ahead and grab slant color one i'm going to go to select this is one of the shortcuts i showed before in the video and i am going to go to fill color so everything in this design that has a fill color of purple i am going to switch it to the gold okay now I'm going to go to slant color three and I'm going to go select same fill. I made my own shortcut. It's the letter F. So if I just click on F, it's going to grab fill color. So I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to turn it to purple. So basically. Oh, just kidding. I'm going to grab slant color three. I'm going to go to select everything that has the same name. It has the same fill color, so it automatically changes it. Same name, so that goes top and bottom, and let's turn it to purple. Okay. So now let me go in here to his name on this one. Um, it is gold with the purple outline. So now I'm just going to flip it. And I'm just going to have to do that on every single layer because remember when I first created this file, um, I never went back and updated all of them. So no big deal. So I'm going to go in here, grab this name. Let's flip that one. So let me zoom out so you guys can see. And then I'm going to go to my right side. In the bottom slant, there's a name or text, I should say. Flip that one and in the top slant, there is text. Again, this was already made because I have already created one for this school. So that's why I'm just going in and basically swapping everything out. The logo is still the same. I'm gonna swap out these pictures. Um, let me grab let's see, this one here. Let's go ahead and swap that since I swapped it on the other one. Since it was one, this color on the other one, so I'm gonna grab it back, my effects. It had a purple outline. Let's turn the outline to gold because I want it to be the opposite of what it was before. All right, there we go. Now, let's start changing out the name. So here, this one is TJ. We're gonna change it to Zamir. I'm going to turn on my guide. Remember my four inch guide. I want to keep everything important inside of that red area. So I'm just going to slide his name over a little bit. There we go. 
I can't remember if I swapped the name already. Either way, that looks good. So now I'm going to go up here. His name is not Stalker, so I'm going to switch this one to make sure I have center line on my text. And I'm going to do home. And because it's on the left and the right side, I have to go down here, grab this one, center line, and I'm going to do all this one. Okay. So because his name is so short, I'm probably just going to put it on the one side because if I, let's see if I grab them both, And I stretch it. I think I'm just going to put it this side and I'm going to put the picture cover over here. So I want to keep the one that's on the left side. So let's grab the one on the left side. Just break it down. This is also going to allow me to make it look a little different than the other one. Let me bring it up in so I can actually see. I want to make sure that it's falling pretty much in that red area. If it's cut off just a little, I don't know that. Okay, so I'm trying to turn it off again. But we're back on the beach. And now I need to get rid of the hall over here. So I'm going to go down to my bottom layer and I'm just going to turn all the visibility. So now I'm going to grab this picture here. Elect executive. Sometimes you got to be careful when you're running your zooms. Um, if ever you host a Zoom, I recommend putting it on the waiting room because I've seen Zooms get hijacked from people. All right, so I'm going to click here. I have this picture selected. I'm going to go ahead and go to replace image. And then I'm going to go find the picture that I want to replace it with. So let me see if I can find. I think it was this one I wanted to use, but let me check his other pictures. I just thought when I removed, I did remove the background on it and it's a dope picture, but I just feel like the rest, that back, that whole background like needs to be incorporated somehow. So let me turn my red back on just so I can make sure like most of his body is in that picture. So let's stretch it. And let's move him over. All right. So as you can see up here, my image is coming through the top. That's an easy fix because all I have to do is go and pop it. So let me go to my crop tool, bring it down until it is hidden behind my slant layer. Boom, there we go. Okay. This is why I say like once you make one, you can easily just like go in and swap out pictures. So he has a picture that's posed, I guess, similar, similar to this one as well. So I'm gonna go there, hit replace image. And let's see, oh, it's in a different folder. So the ones where I removed my background are over here. And I named it, it's, um, similar photo, similar pose. So we're going to go ahead and drop him, resize if needed. Um, she says, I still make them. Do I find them in the water, so you mean? Does it sound bad to you guys? Let me know in the, in the chat.
Okay, what about now? Is that better? Okay, perfect. All right. So now I'm just going to resize this picture to how I want it. And I'm going to replace it or place it. All right, so let's grab this one. And I'm going to replace this image with another one. Let's see. So he has this one. I think I wanted to do this one because I want to make it almost like he's jumping off of the page. So let's see. Let me go to my right side, turn on my layer here. Let's move it to the front so I can actually see. Oops, wrong layer. Move that to the front so I can see where the red is. Now let me grab my image and let's stretch it. Okay. So, like, as you can see here, he's kind of coming over it, but I kind of want it to be like, let me see if I can make it make sense. So, if I move him forward all the way, it's like both feet, like he's on top of both layers, but I actually just want the front foot to be over. So, I'm going to slide him. If ever you're moving it and it keeps trying to snap and you don't want it to, just turn off the little magnet and you can move it more freely. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy. So I'm going to do Command Control J. If you're on a Mac, it's Command J. And I want this one to go all the way to the front. Okay because I want this foot to be over the top. Like I want it to almost look like he's jumping over a hurdle where he's going over it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to rasterize this image. I need to erase this part. So this layer, let me turn it gold just so you can see it. And so now right behind it, if I turn it off, if I, if I did not move them, they are stacked right on top of each other. There's that one and there's this one. So let me take the color off. So the one that's on the very top, I'm going to rasterize. So I'm going to right click, hit rasterize. Now I'm going to go into my pixel persona. So right now I'm in designer. That's this blue one. I'm going to go to the little squares. This is pixel persona. This is similar to Photoshop where you can edit photos so you will get a new bar. So now that I have this layer selected and it is rasterized because when I come over here, since it's a pixel layer, now I'm going to grab my eraser tool and let me shrink it down so you can come up here to the size and you can shrink it there or you can use the bracket key, which is next to the P on the keyboard. Those two make it go up and down. Okay. And now I'm going to erase the part that I don't. So I want this to be like it's behind. So I'm just going to erase all of this right here. Okay. Now, go back to my move tool. The reason it still looks like one of his feet are behind is because, remember, I have two images stacked on top of each other. So if I turn off the bottom one, his leg is actually cut off on the top one. But because I left them right on top of each other, and did not move them, it looks like it's still one image. But I erased the one, one image is behind the, the bottom slant and one image is in front of the bottom slant. So when I turn this one back on, his leg comes back in, but now it's behind. So it almost looks like he's jumping off of the stone, right? So now we're gonna go back to designer persona and then we're gonna continue editing. So let's go ahead and grab this picture. Let's replace it. And I have one more image left. This one here. Okay. So let me go ahead and resize it. All right. 
So on this one, when they sent it to me, the legs were already cut off, but that's no big deal because he's going to be behind the slayer anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Otherwise, I'm going to just put it down. So I'm going to shrink it down just a little because it makes it easy to cover the corners, and it defeats the purpose of me making his legs up over the rail because I'm covering it up a little bit. So resize it. Move them around a little. Okay, there we go. Okay, like technically, I'm done. Like this is this is what it's giving. So let me just see if I want to move this around a little bit. Just I just want to switch it up just a little because, like I said, this one is at the same speed. Even it up enough so that it looks different. Just enough so it looks different. But again, the images that they sent are going to make it unique as well. So I'm going to move that fade there. Let me go back into my background color. This one here, I'm going to add a little noise to the gold just so it doesn't look so just solid and plain. So I'm going to add noise to this one. And let me go up to this background color. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Grab that one and then add a little noise. It just kind of gives it a little bit of texture. Um. One other thing I wanted to do is slant color three. I'm going to select all of them. So I go to select, select same. They all have the same name. My shortcut is in. I already hit in. That's why I grabbed both of them. Oh, it's hard to hear. Okay. Can you guys hear better now? Oops. Okay. So now I just want to go add a little effect just to give it a little shadow. So that way, if you're looking here, I'm going to give it just a little bit of depth. So let me go to my effects. Let me pull this over so you guys can kind of see it. And I'm going to add an outer shadow. And I want it to go up at this angle. And if I want to adjust the angle, I can do that too. So I'm going to set this to hard light. Let's start with the offset. Slide it out how far we want it to come out. Adjust the radius to give it a little bit of a blur. And increase the intensity a little bit. And let me pull up the opacity. Okay. So let's bring this down a little. Let's bring the offset down a little. And let's change the angle to see if I like it better this way. Nope, I like it that way better. Okay, so I'm going to decrease the offset because I don't want it to be a huge shadow. And then I'm gonna increase the radius so that way it kind of blurs a little bit more. And let me change the angle back to 45. So now you can see it kind of has that shadow effect. So let me turn this off so that way you can see it. And let me just show you the difference when I go back to this layer. And I turn them off, you can kind of see the difference. So it was flat. When I turn it back on, it kind of gives it that little 3D effect, like that depth to it. So let's do that. And I think we are good here. I almost want to do white on this. Let's see what it looks like with the white. Yeah, let's leave it there. So that way we have all three colors. Let me turn these off 
because you do not want to print with your safety lines on. And there we go. So I'm going to basically go and save this, send it to my customer and see if she approves it. Okay. So let me go ahead on and save it. Um, so I'm just going to save a PNG and only at like 1000. I don't need to be super huge because it's just going to be like a Facebook. I'm just going to post it on Facebook later. Export. Let's go back to my folder. I've been trying to be organized, y'all. So I've just been putting in the order number. As y'all can see, the order's been rolling in. I think that one was like order 4,000 something. We're already on 5028. So I'm going to save that. This is easier than me like trying to put in names because then I can always go back and see what order did it come from. All right. So that's that one. Done. Ready to go. All right. So let me do a file save as because I pulled in that other one, which was this order number. I'm just going to save another copy. So that way, if she comes back and says, well, can you switch this? Can you swap that? Can you, you know, move some stuff around? I still have the edit, the file that can be edited. So what was it? 5028. And so now I'm saving this one as the affinity file. Later on, when I go at the end of graduation season, um, I can go in and start cleaning up some of these. I can delete some of them out if I don't want to keep them for a long amount of time. Or if you have an external hard drive, you can transfer them all over to your external hard drive. So next year when graduation season comes, you can come back and open these old files and see what you did the previous year and start from there. So let's save that. And boom, we are done with this one. So let's go ahead and close. We are going to open a new one. So let's go to recents. I'm going to go to more so I can get the main template. And you guys say, let's do dots for, okay. So here is my main stole template. So I'm going to open this one. All right. So when you guys say dots, are you saying this one, which is ellipse? Or are you saying this one, which is actually named dots? <laughs> So ellipse or dots? I know they both have dots. So I don't know if you guys were referring to a specific one. This one is ellipse. This one is dots. Which one? And the colors are red and black. Sometimes that plays a part in which one I pick, depending on the school colors. Weird, I know, but that's just how it is sometimes. So, oh, one said dots, one said ellipse. All right, let's see. Can we get a tiebreaker? A couple tiebreakers. Ellipse or dots? Which one? Which one will it be? Let me see. I'm going to put them side to side. Ellipse on the left, dots on the right. I guess I can turn everything else off because... We won't be using those. All right, and the tiebreaker is dots. All right, ellipse. Let's put you back in the middle and turn it off. Okay, so again, when you get the template, it's already sized for the 72 inch soles that I sell on my site. So that's what I use to base the template on food. Um, if you go here, hold on, let me turn this one on too. So there's the original slant. That's how it comes when you first start. Um, there is a template for the 60 inch. So basically you can just drop it inside. You have the 60 inch, but I need to go open up because I don't do very many of the kid ones. So I need to go open up the, the one I previously did so I can see what size it is. There it is. So these are 28, point, 28 inches by five inches. So let me go ahead and turn them on, turn dots back on. And I'm just basically going to adjust each size. 
5.5 by 28. 5.5 by 28. And then if I need to, I can adjust this as well. Make it a little smaller, larger, whatever you want to do. So let me go ahead and put this back in the center of my page. Oh, I turned my snap and turn it back on. Now it snaps to the middle and to the middle. Let me bring this down some. Let me bring this one up some. I may even move it. I don't know yet. All right, so let's start by pulling in our pictures. So over here is our place tool, um, the shortcut. I'm modeling because I made my own shortcuts is P. So I'll go there, open up my pictures, and let's grab this is one of them. That's their mascot. And then one, two, three, four, yes, is that all of them? Yes, it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And then I'm just going to place all of these over here to the side, okay? And again, I just removed all the backgrounds ahead of time on remove BG, because like I said, last time when I tried to go live, I was trying to do way too much. So to prevent any mishaps like that, I just decided to do them ahead of time. But that's all I did, I just used remove BG. All right. So here we go. Oops, let me sit up a little. All right, so first things first, let me grab the logo, the mascot. I'm gonna move him over here to this side. We are going to do red and black. So I'm just gonna grab the color picker and grab the red that's in her dress. I'm gonna go get darker red, a little bit darker. And black on this one. Mm, do I want to swap them? Yeah, I think I'm going to swap them. This one red. And this one black because I want to put the logo on this side, but I don't want it to be lined up with the box because I don't want it to have like too much going on. So I just want it to be solid. Right. Um, let me go back over here. I think my safe area was three and a half. So I'm just going to copy this one. And how I got the safe area is my soul. The, the, the template has a bleed already built into it. So I went to my soul and saw how wide it was. And I went down just a little bit from that to make sure that nothing important gets cut off on the edges. So I have my width for the safe area is 3.75. So I'm assuming my stole was probably about four inches wide. So I went a quarter inch down just so I can make sure like, okay, if I stay in this area, I know for sure it's going to fit on the stole. So that's how I come up with the safety area. So then I'm just going to paste this over here. So that way I have it. Line it up in the center. Make a copy, which is control J. And slide one over here to this side as well. Okay. All right. Um, one thing that you can do is if you lock it. So if I lock both of these, because sometimes you're trying to like go back and grab, like let's say for instance, I don't lock this one. And you're trying to go grab the little, the logo guy, you keep grabbing the safety area instead of grabbing the logo. And then you just keep moving it. So if I lock it, like I can't grab it. I can't grab the, the safety zone and move it at all. So that's a good tip to do when you're trying to prevent it from moving. All right, so now I need to figure out how I want to arrange these pictures. Okay, so I know I want this one to be at the bottom since she's already in the seated position. I don't want it to be, unless I'm gonna crop it and cut her off, but I don't want her to like be kicking herself in the back of the head. So let's go ahead and resize it. Let's shrink it down a little bit. 
and let's put her basically right there. And we're gonna drop her into the right side. Boom. Let me grab my logo. Let's shrink it down just a little bit so that way I can get. And let's drop him into the left side. There we go. Okay. So because she has two similar pictures, and as you can see here, like she's like a double image. They sent the image she was in the mirror, but I'm going to leave that because I kind of like the effect that it gives. Um, and because she has this dress on in both of these pictures, I am going to put them on opposite sides. And because she's doing a similar pose in this one, I have to decide if I want it to be on the same side or opposite sides. But I think I'm going to go opposite just because the poses are so similar. So let's go ahead and drop this one over here. All right, so let's drop this one is on the right side, but I need it to go below this this um, sitting layer. So let's drop it down one. I'm gonna just use the move back one. And so now she's behind herself there. Let me turn this off just so I can get a better look. Now, I have been in love with the black and white photos and the color photos lately. So I think I wanna throw this one in black and white. And sometimes when I do this, because not all people, I mean, black and white, it's either you like it or you don't. Um, again, too, also with the color photos, like it makes the design to me look nice, but some people just don't like, they're like, I just want to see the natural look of the picture. So it's easy for me to just go in, create the design like this with the black and white, save it, come back over here, take the color out, save it again, and send both to the customer so that way they have the option. Um, sometimes I'll send it with just the black and white option first because we know like if you give customers a lot of choices, then they may, you know, it becomes too indecisive and then they're like, well, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? So I'll send it like, let's say for instance, with the black and white first. And if they're just telling me like, no, I just don't like the black and white, then I'll just go back, swap it out. I'll probably already have it saved the other way, but not sending them both at the same time. Like if you as a designer think it looks nice one way, share that with the customer first because they may not even think like, oh, the black and white will look good until they actually see it. And then if they just say, no, they absolutely hate it, then you just go ahead and change it and put it in another way. So let's just resize just a little bit and put it over here, all right? And then let's put these two pictures. Um, this one, I'm, excuse me, I'm gonna place at the top. I know just because the balloon, if I put it below it, it's gonna cover her face on the other design. So let's go ahead and shrink this down. Try to get it into our safe area. making sure we don't cut off her face. Let's resize it, put her right there. I'm not worried about the back one being cut off because it's kind of like a reflection anyways. So let's drop her into this layer and move her behind the mascot. Let's grab this one. Okay, she's kind of twisted sideways. So if you want to kind of straighten her up, you can just twist it, even though that was her like pose, but it's kind of hard to get more of her in the picture without cutting off so much. Just drop her below that layer. Let me just turn off the yellow really quick so I can see it. Move this one down some. Let me turn my yellow back on, make sure I didn't move her out of the safe zone. So I have to, I can move her over this way 
but since I'm really not trying to get the balloon, I can actually go over more this way so I can get more of the, little, the attitude in there with the two fingers up. And then turn that off so we can kind of see. Again, you can play with the color. Usually I'll pick one picture to adjust the color for the most part, but you can always see what it looks like. I actually want to see what it looks like in red, but there's already a lot of red going on here. And I don't like the black and white on the black side. So I'm just going to leave that more full color. Okay. Um, when it comes to placement from the top on my elementary junior high stoles, which are the 60 inch stoles, um, I typically do about 10 to 12 inches. The same thing for the high school ones, which are the 72 inches. About 10 to 12 inches from the top is usually pretty safe. So on these, like we have this one here, and then if I turn on the other one, it's right there. We can go ahead and Affinity has a new measure tool, and we can kind of measure down. And I think this one did go kind of high, but it's about eight inches. If I'm going off of this side, this one is about the 10 inches. So anywhere from eight to 10 on the kid soles seems to work. These are 50 inch soles. Now I don't have the kid ones on my website. Those will probably be some that we grab next year because they were very popular this year. But I have bought one from another vendor. I'm trying to remember the name. I need to go find my receipt. But when I ordered, she only had five left and I bought the five that she had and now I'm down to like two. So yeah, that's that. So let me go ahead and turn this off really quick. Let me add some text. Um, this is a very fun kid. So I'm thinking rock and soda for my font, my bold font. Um, let's see. Your caps. I think it's is it A M E Y or A M A Y? Let me check the yes yeah, A M E Y. And we're gonna go with Rock and Soda because it's a super fun and whimsical kind of like childish font. Let's go with black and. Let me turn my rectangle back on. Let's go with 3.75 for the width. And I'm just going to drop that right there. Like, So I do the 3.75. Remember, like I told you, the stole is four. So I know what 3.75 is going to fit so I can max it out in my safety area. And then let's make a copy. Let's do her first name. But Oops. Let's go ahead and grab us a script font. Why not do what we were pairing together when we did the senior stack design? Let's see what Houston signature looks like. Move it to the front. Oops. Let me change the color so I can actually see it. Boom, loving it. So let's move this. A little bit smaller, maybe a whole inch smaller than the other one. Maybe I'll go a little wider, but then a little shorter. Okay. And then I'm going to overlap just a little. Um, now that I have it in the in a good spot, let me remove the yellow so I can actually see what's going on here. Let's add some effects to kind of give the name some dimension. So we're gonna open up our effects panel. Let me slide this over so you can see the effects being applied. Let's go with the bevel and let's go with emboss. Nope, I like the pillow actually. Let's just bring it down a little so it's not too strong. And then let's add a little, hmm. Don't wanna add, let me do a gradient really quick, just to see if that's what I even wanna do. 
So let's change the angle from top to bottom. The angle is the bottom to top. Let's go like that. I'm trying to see if I want to go from black to red. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. So let's go like that. And then let me go to Paris, add a gradient this way. And let's go red this way. So let me slide this a little bit, oh, not too much. Okay, but now I need to create some separation. So I can do one of two things. I can add um let's see, not an hour. I can add a glow with white. So it kind of separate, you see how it gives it that separation. And then if I go to the Amy, instead of adding, I can also add a glow if I wanted to. So we could add a glow to this one. But because I don't want them to be exactly the same, because I kind of want to create that separation, let's just create an outline. But let's do it in white. Because the outline is going to just be like a strong. Oops. So let's go like a two. And I'm going to go back to my emboss or to my bevel and emboss and let's bring it down just a little bit. Let's see if I switch the style, if I like that better. I kind of do. Nope, let's go with the emboss. Well, let's see what the emboss looks like. Oh, that's not bad. Now let's do this one the same. Inner. Let's bring it down since this is very thin font. There we go. Okay. So just that just kind of separated the name. So now I want to grab my dot layer back here. And let's bring down the transparency or the opacity. So let's bring it down to like 50. Okay. So that way you can still see the dots are still there, but they're, they are not overpowering the design. So if I were to bring the dots back to 100, they're very strong. They're very front and center. They're very much grabbing your attention. But if I go back to the 50, or even let's say even 30, you can still see it back there as like a texture, but it's not overpowering her pictures or her name. So that's 30, let me see 50. I think I like 30 better. And then let's move it up just a little bit. Okay. So now that I've made the dots not so prominent on the other side. Let's bring this down. Whoops, not that. Let's grab the dot layer. You see how the center of it is kind of like, once it gets so close together, the half tones, it kind of just becomes a solid almost. So I kind of like to hide that behind. Some. So I'm just going to bring this layer down. So it's going to get in my head. And then I'm going to change the opacity. And it's still there, it's still giving me the texture, but it's not overpowering. Now I need to create some separation between my pictures. Oh, I do need to add her school name. Um, don't want to put, I don't know if I want to put the whole name. So let me grab this, duplicate it, because why am I about to recreate it when I can just retype it? ACA. Um, if the mom comes back and says, hey, can you do the full name of Bobby Lane Christian Academy? I definitely can. But if she is cool with ACA, I'm going to be cool with ACA. Because if you go to ACA, you know exactly what ACA means. So, 
So now that I've done that, let's grab this, let's grab this, and this, let's move it all up. Because although I'm a very symmetrical person, sometimes this is where my asymmetry kicks in, and I kind of like one side to be higher than the other. So let's go ahead and just put this slightly here. You don't want to put this too close to the bottom because that V shape down here on the sole, it could get cut off a little. So you don't want to go too close to the bottom unless it's something you don't mind getting cut off. So let's turn this off. Let's grab this layer. Let's fade it out. So it doesn't have that. Since I moved it from the top, I, don't, I have that sharp edge again. So kind of just fade that out a little bit. Grab this layer with her dress and fade that one out a little bit, just so it's not coming out down here. There's that. And I think we are looking pretty good so far. Oops. All right, let's grab this one. Let's add a little effect. So a little bit of a shadow. Again, I just want to create a little bit of separation. So this time, I think I'm going to use my offset tool. And I'm actually going to drag it where I want it to be. So kind of there. And then I think increase so you can see the shadow more. But then I want to kind of blur it. So I'm going to pull up the radius. Um, if you want it to glow red, you could. But I usually, most of the time, I don't know, for some reason, me and the, um, the extra glow just, I don't know, sometimes I just pictures and I'm here for it. And sometimes, like, but it does give us a nice separation. Let me see what happened. Okay. So a little bit of glow. Let me bring down the opacity so it's not like super white and overpowering. That I don't really mind. So I'm going to hit scale with objects so that way no matter what I use it, it can be the same. So if I want to apply the same effects to this picture, if you're in Affinity 2, you can just grab the effect and drag it to the other picture, and it'll do the exact same thing too. Okay. Um, if you are in Affinity 1, so I'm going to undo. If you are in Affinity 1, you grab the layer. Let me adjust this just a little bit. Let me bring it up to about, let's do 75. Okay, so you grab the layer that you like. You can do Control C, Command C, or you can do right click, copy. Now go to the layer that you want to apply it to. Come over here to Edit, and then paste FX. So Alt Shift V is the shortcut, and you can do it the same way that way. So in Affinity Two, they just gave you a shortcut where you can just drag it and drop it here. But in Affinity One, you can copy the effects if you like it. Um, I don't know that I like it on this one as much as I do on that one, just to show the separation. So I'm going to apply it to this one here. 
So let me grab this one. I still have a copy from the last one. Do I have the picture still? Yes, I do. Go up to edit and paste the fix. There we go. What do you guys think? I really want to move these up just a little bit. Michelle, still there a bit? What do you guys think? Let me move it over to just a little because my center is kind of showing. All right. And like I said, even with these, like those were, they were white and I faded them out. I swapped them to black. I actually like the way that looks. I swapped them to black and still have it at 30%. So you can have it either black or you can have it white. I don't know which one I like. Here I am. Where I should have did that. I think I'll put the black on the red side and then the white on the black side. How about that? Let me take off the stroke. I don't want the stroke on it. All right. And boom, there you go. We just designed that stole. Um, I can actually grab, grab all of this side and I can move it down just a little bit. Let me see, I'm going to grab this. Let me put everything. The name goes on the right side. So I just want to drop everything in the side so that when I go to select it, I can move it. And let's just move it down. I'm going to turn on the yellow so I can see where I am. And let's just move it down just a little bit. So not too close to the edge there. So there's that. Everything face is still good, it's still in the picture. And then if I want to go just grab, turn this off, grab the name and just move this part up a little, I can do that so it's not too close to the edge. Now, what do you guys think? And again, I just took that simple and basic background and turned it into what it was. Now, if you want to take it up, the mom, she just wanted it. She said, keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it nice. Um, but like I did, someone asked about, uh, which order was that? I don't even remember. I just did that one. Maybe it was this one. So I had just did this one, this arrow one. Okay, and they were like, oh, what background was that? Like, Where'd you get that from? I literally just took this from Google. I don't even know this image, so I'm gonna copy it. I don't even know where this image came from. Just because for that one, I felt like like she was serving, like she is giving life in this picture. And the glitter was just giving life. And just to have this plain background, I was like, no, I can't. It, it was just too plain and simple. So I decided to add that in just to give it just that little pop. So if you're ever feeling like that, you just find you a nice little background. Let's shrink it down. Make it a little bigger. Um, let's drop it into the red side. Before you drop it in, you can always make a copy so that way you can have it. But let's turn it to red. And just look at the difference. Like it just gave it that little, just that little extra, like just a little extra. What do you search to find good backgrounds? Um, this one I think I just searched blue sparkle background because her school colors are blue. So like blue sparkle background, blue or gold. I just searched gold glitter background. Um, I'll search like masculine background if I'm looking for something for a guy fancy background like you know, kind of search and find what you need and I, 
because I never said it because it will not be something that I want or it's been something that I've seen other people use. And most people go through like the first couple pages and then they're like, okay, let me search something else. Go deeper in those pages because sometimes it's some stuff that's stuck back there that doesn't get looked at often. And that's why it gets pushed to those back pages. But it's some good stuff over there. So I'm going to grab this layer, make a copy, control J, go drop it into the black background, and then let's turn it to black. So we could do that. Um, let me see. I could try to recolor since usually when you try to do black, it's going to, no, not recolor. Is going to um, excuse me. Is going to turn it like more of a grayish, so I can come in here and kind of adjust my levels if I wanted to look more black. Uh, let's bring down my white levels a little. Oh no, not that way. Okay, so now. As you can see, like, if I were to turn this all the way down, when I just adjusted the color to black, it kind of gives it like a gray color. But when I came in and adjusted the levels to where I wanted it, it gives me more of that black. So, now it's got me thinking if I should turn my dots back white, but let me just check and see. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Now we're going to go ahead and leave them black. And I don't want the stroke on it. Okay. Do I want to change the opacity now that I've added a background? No, I don't. Hey, okay. these are just the things that you kind of play with just to see what you want to do. But just that little bit of extra. And even, I can even turn the dots off and say like, I don't even need the dots anymore. Maybe I don't need that much of the dots. Maybe I can move it down some now since I added in some of the sparkles. Like you can make all of those decisions. I don't know, just for me, the sparkles, it's just if it look if it's her personality like two or two. So there we go. That's number two. We just designed two stones within one hour. Now, mind you, the first one was already pretty much built out. I just had to go over and swap. But that's the beauty of having a template or having a design already created. Because if I'm doing 50 stoles during graduation season, I don't have time to do 50 from scratch. Like if it takes me 45 minutes to create one from scratch, or let's just say an hour, that's 50 hours. That's like two full days worth of designing. That doesn't even include printing. That doesn't even include pressing. So if you can make it easier, which is what the, the bundle was created for, then use it to your advantage. Like I know I had a lot of people, I was talking to, um, I think she's still on here, Queen Heart. She was like, okay, I'm ready to do another design because I'm tired of seeing the same design over. And as designers, that's how we get. Like people see and they're like, oh, I want it just like this one that you made. And they're like, again, another one. Like you change the colors, you change the pictures, you change the school name, you change the student name, all of that. But for us, we just see the same design over and over and over. And that's usually how it is in a, in a season like this, in a graduation season where they see it, they love it, they want it. And we just have to kind of suck it up and keep recreating the same thing over and over and over. But like you can try to add your own little flair to it if you can. Um, switch it up a little like I did with this one. Start adding a little background to it. Give it a little bit of different pizzazz. But for the most part, the customers are like, like this kid, you don't even, we don't even go to the same school. Or if we do go to the same school, guess what? My pictures are not your pictures. My name is not your name. It's going to be different to a certain extent. So it's usually just us as designers that get tired of seeing the same. Like when you do birthday stuff, like when Coco Melon was, I think Coco Melon is still hot, but when Coco Melon was like on fire, 
everybody was like, oh, I don't want to do another Cocoa Melon. We, we do it because that's what people are paying for. But if I don't have to see another Cocoa Melon for a month, I wouldn't be mad, right? That's just how it is because you keep seeing the same thing over and over and over. But people see what they like, they see what they want, and they want you to do exactly like you already nailed it. So why change it? But I am loving this. I hope her mom likes it. Let me go ahead on and save this. Uh, let me get her order number. Change this to 1,000. Um, just that quick while we were on here, two orders came in. Hey, hey, let's see. So this is 5027 grad stall. So let's save that. And then, like I said, if you want to be able to edit, do a file, save as, and it's 5027. Right, so um, once they tell me like, okay, yeah, that's perfect. I'm ready. Because I print from a different software, I print from a RIP software. Um, I don't print straight from Affinity, but I normally save again. So because I save it as a PDF, and it'll go over to a different folder. So I'll do this. And then I have another folder that's labeled print ready. Okay. So because I'll probably say like, let's say for instance, she wants to change something. I got to go save it again, re-upload it, share it with her again. I don't want to get confused which which one I'm supposed to print. So whenever I'm in the middle, middle of a busy season like this, if I'm doing Mother's Day, if I'm doing Christmas, like whatever it is, um, I always create a print ready folder. So within my graduation 2023, I have one that says print ready. Once they've approved it and said, yes, this is the one that I want, this is where I will save it. And I will say whatever version you need, if you need um, a PDF, a PNG, whatever it is, I save it here in the print ready folder. So when I go to look for it to print, I'm not trying to go through the five or six different versions that I created earlier. I know this is the one that's ready to be printed. So I'm not going to save it because she hasn't approved it yet. But I do, I'm looking at this now and I do want to move it. I thought I moved it, but I don't think I did. Okay. Yes. I love how you flip the designs. Thank you. Like the, the biggest one for me, y'all, let me show y'all. Okay. So let me grab, let me grab this one. This one right here, y'all, listen. And um, is it in this design? Oh, yes, yeah, right here. Let me zoom out, paste. Whoops, let me undo that. Look over here, paste it over here. Let me get these guys out of the way. But y'all, this is the exact same background. Both of these were created with triangle. But look how completely different they look based on what I did with them. Because this one here, Miss Madam Doctor, yes, Dr. Um, Hickman Jones, graduating from A.T. Steele University, and Mr. Cole Stone, graduating from Little Legends Pre-K School. Like, the same exact background. Let me move this out of the way. These are both triangle. And I just doctored them up a little different so that way they fit the sophistication that I needed them to fit. So this one here, he got these rectangle bars going across to add his name and everything. And on this one, all I did was add in that vertical rectangle, threw in these pictures, and it looks like two completely different templates, and it's not. It is the exact same one. If I get rid of, uh, this, look at that. And if I get rid of this, it's exactly the same. But because I needed it to be more clean. His was more fun and whimsical, which was fine. It worked for pre-K, but I needed this to be more clean and more legible. I just added those in and it completely transformed this 
Now, instead of having 10 templates, now have 11. Same thing with adding the background to this one. Now you add this sparkle in, you made a whole new, this is a whole new template. It don't even look like dots of what we started with. So, but I want to thank all of you guys. Let me see if I can stop sharing. Where's Zoom? Stop share. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, it was a pleasure. I'm really, really honored that you guys hopped on with me. I will get this saved and uploaded to YouTube for you guys to go back and rewatch. I know it got kind of lengthy, but um, thank you. I will make another live soon. Hopefully I'll be able to go live pressing some of these, but it's just been so busy that I've been needing to press them and get them out the door. And usually I'm pressing at like midnight and y'all are asleep. Probably while I'm pressing, you can go out here on the East Coast so it's like three in the morning. But I will try to schedule a live so I can go live pressing some of these for those that haven't seen me uh, press a stole recently. But if you need to see them, we have some on our YouTube channel. I will link those in the description below so that way you can get access to those. And I will see you guys next time. Make sure you have an epic day. And I'll talk to you later, camp folks.